Hello, and welcome to this getting started video for the STM32L475E Discovery Kit for IoT Node. This kit is designed to be the quickest way to develop IoT applications based on rich hardware, simple software, and easy support to connect intelligent nodes to cloud servers and build powerful services. Now let's discover the hardware components on this board. The board is based on an STM32L475E microcontroller with a 64-bit Quad SPI NOR flash memory device, two MEMS microphones, and a user button that can be used as a digital input or as an alternate wake-up function. A reset button is also provided. It is also equipped with a set of sensors able to report humidity, temperature, three-axis magnetic data, 3D acceleration, 3D gyroscope data, atmospheric pressure, and proximity and gesture detection. It also embeds a wide range of peripherals enabling wired and wireless connectivity. Four RF interfaces are available on this STM32L4 board. A Bluetooth V4.1 compliant module, a low power programmable RF module, a Wi-Fi module, and a dynamic NFC tag with its printed antenna. Two USB connectors are also provided. One is a full-speed OTG USB interface, and the other is dedicated to the ST-Link connectivity to enable the control of the board via a virtual communication port on a PC. The support for Arduino Uno V3 and PMOD connectivity provides unlimited expansion capabilities with a large choice of specialized add-on boards. To operate the board, flip it over and ensure that the JP8 jumper is open, the JP5, JP6, and JP7 jumpers are closed, and the JP4 jumper is set to 5V ST link. On the top of the board, Connect a USB cable on the ST-Link CN7 connector to a PC. LED6 should light up red to indicate the activation of the ST-Link communication, and LED5 should light up green to confirm the 5-volt power on. Now let's see how to build an IoT application. The IoT concept enhances the existing networks through an intelligent cloud. It involves three main components, the IoT node, the IoT services located in the cloud, and the user of such services. Here, the BL475E IoT01 board is the IoT node running an application, and Amazon Web Services, AWS, is the platform providing the IoT services. AWS enables secure bi-directional communications between IoT nodes and a cloud server over MQTT protocol. At the other end, a user can connect to the server via a browser or an application running on a mobile and access the IoT node data in the cloud at any time and from any location. Each connected IoT node must have AWS credentials to access the IoT services on the server. The recommended way to create AWS IoT security credentials is to sign in at the AWS website and use the Identity and Access Management, or IAM, web service. All traffic between AWS IoT servers and other IoT nodes must be encrypted to protect data. In this demonstration, the IoT node communicates sensors values to a dedicated topic area on a cloud server using what Amazon calls the Thing Shadows service. This service maintains a shadow mode for each thing, that is, a device, connected to AWS IoT. The user can then subscribe to this topic and get updated data by connecting to this server. Now, let's set up the board to make it an IoT node. Connect a PC to the board via a USB cable and open a virtual terminal to interact with the application running on this device. This connection will allow us to flash the board, set up the Wi-Fi parameters to connect to the Internet network, store the AWS security credentials to get access to IoT services, subscribe to topics related to IoT nodes, and display the messages exchanged with the cloud server. Once the board is flashed, press the Reset button. 
The terminal displays the banner for this cloud connectivity demonstration. Enter the SSID, the security mode, and password of the selected Wi-Fi access point. The board makes up to three attempts to connect to the Wi-Fi network. Once connected, the board sets its real-time clock from the network time. Then the terminal prompts for the AWS credentials. First, enter the root certificate that you built when you created your AWS account. This key is quite big. Then enter your device certificate, which is also part of the security keys forged through your AWS account. This certificate allows the device to be authenticated when connected to the server in the cloud. Enter the device private key, which is linked to the public key and the certificate sent to the AWS server. Enter the server name of the nearest AWS server in your region. Enter the device name. This will help to identify the device and ensure the right access to the data storage. In this demonstration, the name of the connected device is Testing 2 GFA. The device then makes up to three attempts to connect to your AWS account. Once connected to AWS, the device is now considered an IoT node. The IoT node subscribes to the AWS Thing Shadow service that acts as an intermediary, allowing devices and users to retrieve and update data on the dedicated Thing Shadow. It then starts publishing sensor data every 10 seconds via messages to the slash shadow slash update topic. Now let's see how to interact with the IoT node. Connect to your AWS account. Enter the IoT services. This platform lets connected devices interact with cloud applications on user devices such as mobile phones or PCs. The dashboard reports the type of connection and the protocol used by the IoT node to publish messages. Here, MQTT protocol is the most used. Use the AWS MQTT client to subscribe to or publish messages to specific topics. The IoT node sends data in MQTT messages that are published on a topic named shadow slash update. Subscribe to this topic to view these messages. The first message appears in the window displaying the sensor's data. The sensor's values are published approximately every 10 seconds. The next message appears in the top window with an updated timestamp. Each MQTT message sent to the shadow slash update topic is checked by the Thing Shadow service and forwarded as an augmented message with additional metadata like timestamps to the shadow slash update slash accepted topic. Subscribe to this topic to view the augmented messages. All sensor values are tagged with a timestamp. These augmented messages are updated every 10 seconds, reflecting the original traffic from the IoT node. Timestamps are updated accordingly. Now let's see how to remotely switch on and off an LED on the IoT node directly from this MQTT client that can run on any user mobile phone. To change the LED state, press the blue button on the device. This action triggers the publication of a message for a desired LED state change on the shadow slash update topic. The Thing Shadow service sends this message to the shadow slash update slash accepted topic on which the device subscribed. At subscription time, the device can define an action to do when a message is received on a topic. Here, the callback displays the message on the local terminal and sets the LED in the desired state on the board. The device then reports the new LED state on the shadow slash update topic. On the AWS IoT platform, the MQTT client publishes the messages sent to the shadow slash update topic. The first message shows the desired state change for the LED resulting from the blue button pressed on the IoT node. The second message reports the new state for the LED resulting from the callback executed on the IoT node 
when the first message was sent to the shadow slash update slash accepted topic. Hence, the LED toggles via the AWS IoT platform each time the user blue button is pressed. To learn more about this STM32L475E Discovery Kit, go to st.com and search for BL475E IoT01A. Here you will find the STM32 Cube L4 Comprehensive Software Tool, Discovery Board Schematics and Gerber Files, Data Brief, User Manual, and other related materials that will help you speed up your development. To learn more about the STM32 L4 series, visit our website at www.st.com slash STM32L4 and www.st.com slash STM32L4 discovery. Thank you for watching this video.